Hello dear viewers, my name is Nino and today we're taking a closer look at the Duji X30. The X30 is a budget smartphone and therefore it does have some limitations which I'll be addressing but first let's start with the hardware. First and foremost this is a strictly 3G phone so if you want 4G LTE you will not be able to use it with this phone. You have Android 7.0 installed here however it's slightly modified from Duji. It is unlocked for all carriers so you don't have to worry about that. Two SIM cards go in here at the same time and can be used in dual standby and you can also insert a micro SD SD card without removing any of the SIM cards to expand your internal storage which is nice. We have a 5.5 inch display which is with a resolution of 720p. The CPU is an MTK6580 which means 4 cores at 1.3 GHz clock speed, 2 GB of RAM, 16 GB of ROM. You can as I've mentioned expand that with a, a micro SD card. You have two cameras at the back, two in the front. The ones in the front are 5 megapixel cameras, the ones at the back are 8 megapixel cameras. The battery is a 3360 milliampere per Hour. All in all, it is a very handy and fairly small phone. If we take a closer look at it, we'll notice that we have the speaker at the back of the phone, which is kind of bad when you place it somewhere, you're not going to be able to hear too much of it. You can remove the back plate to expose the entries for the micro SD card and the SIM cards, as well as to change the battery of the phone. Things that I'm missing here, however, are illuminated touch buttons and also an LED light. When it comes to software, you can actually uh, download updates from Duji and Duji is actually doing a pretty good job updating their software. Chinese manufacturers will often not do that good a job with their software and the most of them will actually not offer that many updates as well. Duji is doing a good job here and is making it easy for those of us who don't want to install this kind of software in any manual way. You can do it straight from the phone. If you swipe left to right you're going to open kind of a news feed something that reminds me of Flipboard and at the top you got this hanging string which if you pull down you can use to change the appearance of the skin of the phone. However these things can annoy you so if you hold the screen and go to the launcher settings you can actually disable some of them unfortunately the news feed cannot be disabled or you can just download a different launcher from the app store and it will work just great another thing that we'll notice is the cameras these pictures are a bit blurry they're not very well illuminated so all in all this is where these companies often save when it comes to budget phones with HDR the picture is much brighter but it is still muddy and I generally absolutely dislike this camera so when it comes to camera this phone is not something that anyone will want to see I I tested the performance with Antutu and it turned out that it was just a little bit over 24,000 which is just about enough for you to handle every daily task you could throw at the phone without going into intense graphics that need to be rendered at the phone. You can still do your social media and watch videos online, stuff like that, open sites, all this works pretty well. But you will notice that the phone will sometimes stutter simply because it isn't fast enough. You have a touch screen which is only a two point touch screen. Now this is quite bad because this means that the touch screen will only recognize two touches at the same time if you use three fingers it will not be recognized and that can cause for some very weird effects if you're trying to type with both hands or other things if you take a look at game performance the phone actually performs quite well for a phone that is not that strong and all in all as a budget device it does perform in terms of gaming with games that are not too intensive of course quite okay it does offer good results so I would rather say if you want to buy this phone for an elderly person or maybe for a child that's quite young that might be a good starting phone because if they break it you haven't wasted too much money but if you want to give it to something like a teenager somebody who's a power user in any way or you want to use it for yourself and you're a grown-up person and you want to do more than just talk on the phone occasionally open wikipedia and just check your emails and stuff this phone might not be for you because like i said they're stuttering we have no notification led which means that once the screen is off if you miss the sound of a notification you will not know that you've missed a call or you've missed an sms or anything like that before you turn on the screen the two touch display it's just a knockout punch for me i absolutely hate that still if you're interested there will be a link to the phone in the description and you can take a look at it on amazon see what it currently costs since the price is often changed but if i had to recommend this phone i'd rather go with don't buy it either pay 20 bucks on top and buy a nicer phone or just go for a different budget phone i have reviewed a few of them you should just take a look at my reviews but overall personally i wouldn't even go with a budget phone like that i just save 100 bucks and buy a more decent device that's what i would do thanks for watching and have a great day.